The video you are presumably about to watch has been sponsored by iFixit. More on them and their special offer later, but for now, let's get into the video. Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with a one day build that is uh, a rarity for us on Tested in that this one day build is effectively a how-to. I don't do a lot of that. I do a lot of, let's figure this out together. I do a lot of what happened, but how-to I leave for other YouTube channels that are far better suited to teach you things like Bill Duran and Beverly Down and other wonderful friends. Um, but uh, I wanna show a little bit of rudimentary electronics work, especially if you think you're not capable of rudimentary electronics work. Um, like many of you out there, I have raised some children. My boys are now 24, but when they were young, I was saddled with the world of children's toys, which is a noisy, concerning world. Because when you've got small children, they really, really, really prize consistency. So when you put on that Buzz Lightyear DVD they got from a cereal box, get ready, because you're gonna listen to it every day for years, as I have. There are two songs on that CD that I've never gotten out of my head. Um, yes, raising children is noisy, and especially in the world of cheap sound chips, um, it's even noisier. I wanna give just a tiny bit of perspective about how much sound chips have changed the world. Because when I was a kid and Star Wars came out, I was 10 years old, and then when I was 10 and a half, all the Star Wars toys started coming online, and we were getting Star Wars toys, and the Star Wars, like Star Wars Han Solo Blaster, the Star Wars DL44 that you could buy from Kenner, uh, did not have a sound chip in, because they no one had developed a sound chip that small for toys yet. Um, no, the, the sound of the laser blaster for the DL-44 and for the, 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 uh, the ER-11, the Stormtrooper blaster, and it was they spun up a motor, and when you pulled the trigger, it drove a little plastic finger into a fan blade. I'm not kidding. And what that would lead to, the sound would be, no. It would hit the sand and go, and that was the Q Q of the laser blaster. So that's pre-sound chips. We had our, our toys made sounds physically. Um, uh, and uh, 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 I wanted to show this. Basically, I want to show you how to make your kids' toys quieter. That's probably in the title of this video, and you already knew it. Um, when my boys were uh, born, we held a dedication for them. We are not religious, but we did want a ritual, and we, uh, their godfather and godmother were present, and my baby mama and I had oh, about 40 friends to a German church on 16th and Dolores. Yeah, I think that's where it was. Anyway, my friend Phil, who I haven't seen in 20 years, and not because of this, no, he's just a funny guy. Phil, like, is the particular sense of humor that like, he's hearing he's going to a baby dedication and he's thinking to himself, what is the worst thing you could bring to a baby dedication? A big space gun. <laughs> but more than that, here's the sound of it. So if I play that for like another three hours, that would give you some idea of what a morning with children is like. Norm is nodding behind the camera. Um, Phil even wrote this hilarious thing. Uh, the gun gene is a strong, overwhelming biological imperative. This gun will determine which of the twins will dominate. It is recommended by sociologists and early child development experts that the gun be placed between the boys as soon as possible. Brilliantly absurd, Phil. My hat is off to you. Um, but I thought this was the perfect toy. I have literally never pulled this out of its packaging in 24 years. Uh, to show you this, and this is, yeah, this is just a cheap two, literally three pieces. There's an, before, orange tip, two sides, and a trigger. Oh yeah, battery compartment. Okay, so. Uh, 
Uh, so let's try and make this puppy quieter, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. There we go. Oh, right, right. Get this. This is how crappy this toy is. Four batteries go in here. There is nothing here to show you their orientation. Where do they go? There's no plastic thing here. And then I, after like an hour of looking and I finally found it on the package. There it is on the package, how to put the batteries in. But I couldn't find it on the gun itself and that made me sad. And then as, uh, then I found it here on the bottom. There it is, but not very well. Nah, it was a little, uh, the story was gonna be better in my head. Okay, let's take this thing apart. Um, I need a Phillips. And here we go. So um, there are a couple of modalities for making a speaker of a toy like this quieter. Uh, you could certainly buy a smaller speaker and put it in there. Uh, but that is like, that kind of solution to me is the kind of solution for the people who really understand electronics. And when I say understand electronics, I want to be clear, like, I mean, there is a certain kind of engineer for whom electronics have an almost physical sort of reality. By that I mean like they understand how the diodes and the MOSFETs and the capacitors, how they all really like do their job. I understand that they're there for a reason and I could explain to you, I think the sort of rudimentary function of these objects but how they all actually fit together to like manipulate electricity to do something, that is, that's uh, above my mental pay grade. And so my electronics, like I know that when you bring two wires together with a battery and a light bulb in the middle, the light bulb lights up if you've gotten the parameters correct. But like, I don't know much more than that. I know that you can lower the, you can dim that light bulb with a resistor, which will take some of the power from the battery and dissipate it as heat. Um, that, that is literally one of the most sophisticated things I know about electronics, but it bears on this build. So uh, I thought it, it was worth mentioning. All right, let's see here. Have I forgotten any of these? Oh, there's the orange tip. There we go, let me get a spudger. Oh, oh, one more. Might not have needed the spudger after all. Oh, 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 come on. There you go. Just a little bit of help, that's it. Oh, I pulled it off the wrong side. That's where the electronics are. Oh my goodness. Um, I am I am not going to waste time putting this back together. So let's put the batteries back in. Oh, oh. In order to put the batteries back in, how do I want to do that? I'm gonna snap that off. I'm gonna put it here, yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, and then Yeah, that will totally do. So we do down. Oh, it needs all four of these. That I'm being silly. That's right. Oh, um, I could just take a power supply and feed this, but I like the idea of it all self-contained. Hold on just a sec. This is not a toy worth saving. I know it should have had some nostalgic value, but it doesn't really to me. I don't really care. Um, so. That goes there, and then this goes there. Uh, 
I'm just trying to get it to be a reasonable platform for demonstration. There we go. Okay, so I can close up that. So we do negative is up, and that means positive is the diagonal. Positive is the diagonal. Negative is the, yeah. All right, now when I touch these contacts, there we go, excellent. All right, so let us remove all of this from the gun. just so that you can see it all. That will help to demystify. There is the brain. Here is the speaker. Ancient cello tape. You can pull the pull the lights out of this thing. Huh. Ooh, sticky, gross. Okay, so let's clear this stuff away and get that out of there. And we have our circuit. To upgrade or not to upgrade? This is the most essential question whenever Apple comes out with a brand new iPhone. But this summer, iFixit would like to challenge you to skip the upgrade. Why? Because with the right tools and parts from iFixit, your phone can feel brand new iFixit Skip the Upgrade campaign is going on now and throughout September. All iPhone parts are up to 20% off, and if you use the code BOGOCASE, that's B-O-G-O-C-A-S-E, at checkout, you will get a free iPhone case. To take advantage of this, head to iFixit.com slash tested to skip the upgrade, save some dough, and breathe new life into your tech. So... I will tell you, children's toys aren't built very sophisticatedly and are not usually very difficult to take apart in the same way that this was not very difficult to take apart. And when you take it apart, you'll see stuff much like this. This is your basic circuit. It's got uh, power, a switch, a speaker, lights, and this is uh, a brain, the brain box. This, is the, uh, this little black circle is the little IC integrated circuit chip in which the angry pixies are tamed and turned into useful minions. Um, and what I wanted to show you was simply uh, how to make this speaker <laughs> That's my favorite sound, the pew, pew, pew. Um, so. Nice toy. Your kid may love it, so what do you do if you don't want to hear this sound? And here's what I'm going to show you. Um, the speaker has two wires going to it. I'm going to clip one and put a resistor in line, and that should make the volume lower. What resistor, you ask? Ah, well, here is, here is where we get to the, my lack of knowledge of electronics <laughs> and how I solve this problem, which will seem to people who know electronics Absolutely dumb. Uh, however, I just want to make it clear that you could do this without any real understanding of how this stuff works, because uh, I started out that way. Uh, and I did this to a couple of my kids' toys back in the day, and boy, it made our lives a lot better. So it begins with clipping one of the wires to the speaker. By the way, tool tip, Weedmuller Steemax, Stirpax, Strip hacks, strip hacks, 
will include a link in the description. Um, Stefan Gotzeventer recently recommended these as the last pair of wire strippers you will ever need, and I find them to be freaking delightful. I just picked them up. They're, they're not cheap. Uh, if you have had pairs of these for years and you are interested in upgrading, go get them. If it's your first pair, you don't need to spend this much. You can go get a cheaper pair until you know, until you know what your point of view is. Uh, but we have now stripped, we've now uh, cut the wire, so I'm going to strip a little bit off of each end of the stripped wire. So if I join them back together, I get... I remove them, I get no sound at all. Now, you can totally do that. You could just open up your kid's toy, clip the speaker. I have no issues with that. That is a great thing to do. But um, you can also... Put a resistor in line and lower the volume. So here's what I'm going to do. I put a little clip lead on each end of the wire and I get out my resistor boxes. Now, resistors, sorry, let's, let's just show you a resistor. That's a resistor. A resistor is a little bit of ceramic and wire takes the electricity coming in, dissipates some of it as heat, and lets the rest, th the rest through. So uh, for like LEDs, you absolutely have to have a resistor, otherwise you'll just blow out those LEDs. They regulate how much power it gets to it. Um, resistors really make, the, they're like, I think one of the, the, if not the most, one of the, like the two or three most common electronic implements. Uh, so you take one of these resistors, I don't care which one, it doesn't really matter. I know that sounds weird, but watch. I'm just taking, I'm grabbing from this bag of 330K ohm resistors. Uh, and I'm just going to, so I'm going to touch these for real. This is the real sound. Now I'm going to touch it to the resistor, try it again. Oh, that's too much resistance. Yeah, too much, so. Let's go down in the resistance. Let's, uh, so 330K ohm. I don't think a 220K ohm is really appropriate. I think I wanna go to something more like a, here's 82 ohms. Cause that was 220,000 ohms of resistance. This is 82 ohms. So this is a lot less. This is literally, this is how I like overlap my level of dumb about electronics and get something out of it. Um, look, and when you want to learn more, hold on, we're just gonna connect up again to get a correct systems check. That's the loud volume and here's 82 ohms. Oh, we had something there. Let's try it again. Okay, let's try this. Nope, 82 ohms, not quite, not quite enough. But let me see, does this get hot if I do that? Is that something that was happening? That's way better. Here, for reference, here's the difference. With, with the resistor. With the resistor. Come on, come on, come on. With the resistor, without the resistor. With the resistor. Ooh, yep. That's a significant difference. And the lights still work. Everything else still works. It's just a lot less annoying to you as a parent. Um, I don't know if 82 ohms is gonna work on your kid's toy, but frankly, an assortment pack of resistors is just like, seven or eight bucks from Amazon. Um, I would tell you to go to Radio Shack, but that doesn't exist anymore, which is a very sad thing. Um, yeah, this is it. Just, I, like, you can work this out mathematically. I have friends who could put an oscilloscope to this and tell you exactly how much resistance to yield, exactly how many decibels of volume drop, but, in my general makerdom, uh, I have found I, I don't need to know much more than this. Uh, and like I said, I understand enough about electricity to be dangerous. But 
I love lowering the threshold to entry. So to me, I think it's unique and interesting to show this sort of brute force way of using amazing electronics that we live with and make our whole world run every day to your advantage, even without knowing functionally exactly what the hell's going on. Um, that's why I wanted to shoot this. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's let this serenade us into the uh, end of this video. Thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you next time. Oh. Yeah, that's my version of an instructable. You're welcome, parents everywhere. <laughs> Toy makers, please in the electronics for our children, include a tiny little button for us to lower or eliminate the volume of stuff. Please, please, it's not that much. What is it, three extra cents to you? It'll make a big difference and be a revolution for parents. All right, thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time. Side note. The designers of these electronics were using the voltage drop from the speaker going at full volume to operate the lights. Watch this. The lights are on. They're going in line with the speaker. That's not because a program has been written for these that matches the speaker. I believe it means that the voltage for these is semi-attached to the voltage drop across the leads from the speaker. Because when I connect the resistor in line and it gets quieter, the lights don't blink as much. That's just circuit design. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think you're worrying about this particular gun for your particular child, but just a side effect I noticed.